Well, welcome everyone. I am Jonathan with my father here, John Elliman, microbiologist extraordinaire. We're looking at something super interesting today, very topical, something that's been uh, affecting all of us for the last two years, pretty much. It's a paper that's printed in the British Medical Journal, um, looking at bifidobacterium in the gut and the severity of COVID. So, well, you know, in terms of the more bacterial diversity, the more high levels of bifidobacterium and how that's affecting people's reaction or severity to COVID. So Dad, the paper is titled, Lost Microbes of COVID-19, Bifidobacterium faecale bacterium, I know you always correct me on that, depletion and decreased microbiome diversity associated with SARS-CoV-2 infection severity. Now this paper has been published back in March earlier this year, being peer reviewed, Looking yes. at gut health, so it's a very, it's a good paper to look at, isn't it? It yes. has a lot of promise. And it's important to say that the senior author of, of this paper ha is a medical doctor and she has uh, a, a company that runs trials for its business purpose, if you like. You know, that's what it That'd does. Be Sabine Hazan, yes, adventurer Sabine. in California. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. And uh, she also runs a business looking at the bugs, analysing all the bugs in people's microbiomes in, in a very advanced way. So this uh, paper combines the expertise that she brings from both sides. And she's also an expert on uh, faecal matter transplants. Poo uh, transplants. Yeah, poo transplants. In layman's terms. And um, is uh, working closely with Professor Tom Barodi out here in, in Australia. Um, and uh, so this work is extremely significant because she's the first doctor to uh, identify the fact that COVID virus, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it is present in the gut of people. Because we swallow the... Because I heard That's a right. few immunologists yep. talking about that, that not only do we breathe in the virus itself, yeah, we're, but we swallow it as well because it's all... It's in the mucous membranes, membranes and we're swallowing the mucus. Yep. And uh, so she was the first to isolate it from faeces. Yep. Okay. So she's got this whole area covered uh, and what she has to say in this paper is extremely interesting. Well, so, so the objective of the paper is the study objective was to compare gut microbiome diversity and composition in SARS-CoV-2 PCR positive patients whose symptoms range from asymptomatic to severe versus PCR negative exposed controls. Okay, let's put that into uh, simple terms. language and uh, so that we can understand it. There are people, and that includes, I believe, someone like me, who spent two hours in a car with a guy sitting closer than you are, mm. who two days later tested positive mm. for COVID and I didn't catch it. Yep. And what, so she took a whole lot of people like me, people who had uh, been exposed in a family situation, for example, uh, the close relatives that they're living with who had COVID and didn't come down with it. Yep. And I've been exposed several times with close contacts and never come down with it, for example. Mm. And then she looked at people who had uh, severe COVID symptoms and also looked at milder symptoms, but the big difference showed up between the people like me, the controls, and people who had severe symptoms. And then she looked at their gut microbiology, she looked at their microbiomes, and she found the major difference was in the diversity but of their gut, so in other words, people with less diversity were more likely to come down with severe COVID. Uh, but the other thing she noted was the absence of certain bacteria made the difference. And one of those major ones that we can do something about is the bifidobacteria. Yep, so bifidobacterium lactis being yep. a probiotic. Yeah, well, there are a lot of different species of bifidobacteria. Uh, the reason most probiotic bacteria uh, concentrate on Bifidobacterium lactis is because it does a, a very good job for a start. It's typical of the um, effectiveness of Bifidos, but
but it survives the stomach acid well and it survives well in probiotic preparations mm. as well. So uh, a lot of the other types uh, like Bifidobacterium brevi and things like Infantis and so on are more fragile and they might be present in some people and doing a good job but if you're trying to take a preparation with those in them they usually die out yep. quickly so you don't get the benefit from them anyway yep. so it's much better to look for as you know uh, a symbiotic powder preparation mm. because that maximizes the the impact of the bifidobacteria yep. natural sources of bifidobacterium i mean obviously we've got probiotic supplements well we've there's all sorts of uh, fermented foods that may or may not contain bifidobacteria. Yep. Uh, the problem is you don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, also you don't know whether they're dead or alive or, you know, what So if an individual is. wants to be more certain, then probably probiotic supplementation of a bifidobacterium lactis is probably the best way to go. I believe so. Yep. In my opinion, that's the way to go. So should we also, okay, so obviously the bifidobacterium, Fecalibacterium. Okay, Fecalibacterium, there's only one species of that genus, and it's Fecalibacterium prausnitzii, and it is a naturally occurring bug in the gut. It's quite prevalent there. Uh, but what she found, this um, Sabine Hazan, uh, yep. Hazan found, was that that can be absent too in people, and and that also is part of which could be wiped out by antibiotics or absolutely that, that that's be. often what happens, and um, so uh, there are no Fecalibacterium prausnitzii uh, supplements. supplements available, yeah. so we can't do anything about that either. You've yeah. got it or you haven't, yeah. and it presumably comes passed down from the mother to the yeah. baby. Which is a conversation for another time. Yeah. Yeah. So the, so the mechanics, so what do you think is, because obviously we're swallowing the virus, what do you think the bifidobacterium... The bifidobacterium... To uh, help this, to make the severity less? Yeah. Look, bacteria talk to the immune system. Good bacteria program the immune system to do all sorts of things. You've got two components to the immune system. There's a part that you're born with that knows how to combat infections, even if it's not programmed. Um, by exposure to those things. Mm. So that's called the innate part, and it means inborn. And that does things like um, secreting general purpose compounds into the mucous membrane in your gut lining and combating as a first line of defense any infections that are trying to get in. Yeah. The other one is the programmable type, uh, and that is when the, the, uh, you're exposed to a particular antigen, in this uh, case the virus, and the virus is sampled by certain cells that draw it into the bloodstream and hand it over to these cells that engulf it and look at it and then produce antibodies to it. They say, you know, OK, I have become a factory now to produce antibodies to this particular antigen and what we'll do now is we will multiply ourselves and produce a whole lot then of factories producing antibodies to that, in this case, COVID yeah. virus. Um, Which so, the virus is actually the SARS-CoV-2 and then... COVID yeah, the virus itself is called SARS-CoV-2. The disease it causes is COVID. COVID. So in a nutshell, they've looked at microbiome diversity, found out that bifidobacterium or high levels of bifidobacterium were correlating and showing that there was less severe issues or symptoms. Yes, yes. Um, so those that had high levels of bifidobacterium in the gut, less severity of COVID. Yes. Which and could probably, for me, you know, personally, again, anecdotally, I could say well, I was, when I had it, I was 12 hours overnight, a little bit of muscle soreness and that was it. And obviously I'm doing probiotics every day. Yeah, so, and I'm doing of, it every day also and didn't even get the symptoms. And a number of friends I've seen doing probiotics yeah. every day yeah. that had either asymptomatic, haven't even shown signs of having it yet, or recovered very That's quickly. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of sense to this paper. That's you know, right. It doesn't make sense. So they say in conclusion, we hypothesise that low bacterial diversity and depletion of bifidobacterium genera. Yeah. You're going to correct me on that? No, that's fine. <laughs> no, 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 no. It right. Either before or after infection led to reduced pro-immune function, thereby allowing SARS-CoV-2 infection 
to become symptomatic. This particular dysbiosis, which is an imbalance in gut bacteria, all right? Pattern may be a susceptible marker for symptomatic severity from SARS-CoV-2 infection and may be amenable to pre-infection, intra-infection and post-intervention. Yes, in other words, we may be able to manipulate the microbiome of people to improve their resistance. How would we do that? Well... But what's interesting here in their conclusion, they say post-infection intervention. Okay. So that's if someone's already got the virus. That's right. Taking, may, taking the bifidobacterium yeah. may reduce severity yeah. even post-infection. That's what she's saying. Yeah. That, that's what they suspect. And, of course, there are other things we can do that we'll talk about in another video about lactoferrin, for example. Yeah, vitamin D. And all vitamin these, D. There's papers on vitamin D and all these things yeah. that... I think for me, it's like they need to be talked about more. You yes. know, we're, is, we, throughout the world, we're all going through this together. Yes. And, and the more we can do to combat and keep yes. ourselves at the best we can be. Well, the fact is, I'm triple vaccinated. And yet by now, because it's been quite a few months since I had the booster, my immunity is probably down at zero again. Mm. And the, uh, you know, the, the fact is that, as Professor Robert Clancy says, and he's got the Order of Australia for developing vaccines, mm. right? Yeah. He is, is worried about the fact that the more vaccinations we have, the less time they last in terms of immunity. Reducing. He also mentioned in an interview that um, he's super worried too about them, the boosters going yeah. forward. That yeah they might be overriding the immune system plus yes, getting yes, the virus. So yes. the immune system sort of got a lot going on, getting a lot thrown at it, That's so right. to speak. And he's, he's assuming, like, you know, he's very knowledgeable well, in this he, area. Yeah, he's, he's speculating. He's taking an educated guess that, you know, maybe we've got to look at everything we can do to support our immune system. Exactly. And not overstress it because the immune system might yes. stop recognising yes, certain right. viruses and SARS-CoV-2 itself. That's because right. Now, these Just days, more, more than ever, we've got to make up, up our own mind about how we tr uh, prove look ourselves, ourselves and look after ourselves. And um, the, as we all are aware, there's uh, been less emphasis on the sort of things we're talking about than on vaccinations. Mm. And um, a lot of people are worried about the side effects of vaccinations. Mm. And, and look, everyone's got to make their own decision, but... A, yeah. a well-rounded approach to all this yeah. doesn't go astray. No, that, that's you know, exactly exercise, right. Look after be your, healthy, look after yourself. Boost your immune system. If you want a vaccine, go for it. It's that's like, right. You know, yeah, well, that's right. Do what's right for you. Yeah. And, and, but let's take a whole approach to this because, you know, the more we discover... A holistic approach, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the more we discover about all these things that can help us, the better yeah. for all that's of right. us. That's right, that's so, right. So yeah. there are things that are readily available on the market now that we can... Purchase yeah. to, that, that apparently, according to the experts, are having a significant impact on our ability to resist this mm. and other infections. I mean, yeah. the flu is looming. We're on just the talking horizon. about one virus in particular here, which that's right. to be SARS CoV 2 yeah. on a that's right. printed but, published paper. But it's, and it's almost certain that the, uh, these um, resistance effects that we're talking about can be extrapolated to other viruses as well. We know, for example, that uh, a particular lactobacillus that uh, I isolated many years ago and that we use, um, Professor Clancy has shown that it can reverse chronic fatigue in, in overtrained athletes that are hitting the wall when those athletes have previously had glandular fever, which is the yeah. Epstein-Barr virus. Yeah. Um, so that is reversing that chronic fatigue. Mm. Um, so there's all sorts of things we can do to strengthen our immune system, to strengthen our resistance to a range of viruses and bacteria. Yep. I mean, lactoferrin, for example, uh, is effective against bacteria and viruses. Yep. Uh, mm. So that's a topic for another video. No, no, that's it. But I think, you know, I mean, got the whole summary of the paper. I mean, it's, it's great to see this kind of information coming out in the British Medical Journal, yep. which is one of the first... It's one one of the first first it, well, it's um, a top journal look medical one of the top journals in the a, world as much as we can um, trust any science i mean these people are doing science in the way that we believe is is um, reliable mm. and doing their best and uh, 
there is no higher standard of science than these people have done in, in this paper. And I think a fundamental for me personally is taking bifidobacterium like this every day, for yeah. me, is only going to do me good anyway. Well, absolutely. <laughs> for the gut health. There is no side effects to doing no. a probiotic every day. No, 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 that's right. And uh, people need to uh, experiment with the way they take it, how much they take each day and so on. You know, I just took mine, two very heaped teaspoons of our, you know, plus product. Um, uh, you know, and I, that works well with me and my uh, irritable bowel syndrome perfectly controls it. So mm. now that's... I guess making a health claim, but it, uh, which I'm not allowed to do. But yes. that's, well, that's the fact. I'll just have to that out now, won't I? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, but that's a fact, and um, mm. you know, I'm not sure that you should cut it out. I mean, that's uh, mm. what's happening. It is. Yeah. It is. Well, anything else you want to add to the paper? Is there anything else that stood out to you that you no, think? No, look. That... I mean, we'll link the paper <clears throat> at the bottom. We'll link the description or somewhere around the video so that yeah. anyone that wants to actually go do see the physical paper or the digital paper to look at it yourself. So it's not, it's not a super complicated read. I mean, it's, there are some things that I would find complicated not being a microbiologist or a scientist, but it's not super long. It's probably about 10 pages long, I think, 14 pages long. Um, yeah. And it's a really interesting read. So, um, Dad, thanks for your time. No I hope problem. everyone found that very enjoyable and informative. And um, as always, stay healthy and look after your guts. Amen.